Hi, welcome to the video. So in this, I'm going to talk about the most difficult video I've had to make regarding the Kenny Veach M Cave mystery. And I would have to say it's the disappearance of Mosaic Michelle video I did previously. If you haven't checked it out, make sure to do so. Very in-depth and quite cinematic if you're into that. So the reason why it was so difficult not emotionally, nothing like that. I only knew them for a short spell. It was because of the difficulty editing, recording and piecing it all together as one. The video itself was about 27 minutes long. I didn't have much material. I didn't have videos, pictures, CCTV footage of them. I didn't have profiles or accounts to research and to look at online. There was no articles or reports. There was nobody else investigating because no one knew they were missing from what we know of online. So all I could work with was screenshots on some of my videos and some live streams. And that's it. That's difficult. So because of that, most of the video was me talking into the mic, an audio recording, about nearly 27 minutes worth. So in order for that audio to become a video, I needed media to put on top of it so the audio could fit underneath. So it meant I had to find 27 minutes worth of stock footage. That is not easy. So basically I was telling a story from start to finish, all the events, all the factors, key elements and uh, stuff that went on with her and what she told me. And I had to find and locate and source out three non-copyright stock footage which matched that scene, matched that moment, matched that theme. And even when I talked about keywords such as, unfortunately, this became locked and we couldn't see it again. And I found some stock footage of like um, a virtual padlock shutting down and like cyber animations and vaults going all over the place to symbolize it's now locked. And even like when I've talked about saying, a key point is, I found stock footage of a key spinning around digitally because it was online. And like when I was talking about um, a potential stalker, you try looking for free stock footage of a stalker on YouTube. Literally, there's nothing. But I managed to find one of some, you know, hooded individual with a mask in the dark and the light faded in and out. That was very key. And it was the only one video out there that matched that theme. The next problem was trying to find stock footage which profiled the individual M Mosaic Michelle. I had to find specific stock footage of obviously a female and a female with black hair. You know, it, all these like specifications and key characteristics, most YouTubers do not do whatsoever. Even the big YouTubers, even the really popular ones, they do not go to this length or depth and yet I tried to specifically source out stock footage which resembled their appearance, their characteristics, and the events and things they went through. Like when I was talking about those arguments and the uh, tension between her and uh, some person she was with at the time, and I had to try and find stock footage of two people arguing without it being too over the top or too suggestive and stuff. So I managed to find some random one where a person just kind of like grabbed the person's arm and started shaking them um, gently. So that kind of symbolized that without it being too over the top. Plus as well, the stock footage I was using, it had to be within reason and it had to be appropriate because you know how YouTube is. You use the wrong type of stock footage, and it might go against certain rules. And, you know, things can get very messy. So yeah, there was a lot to it. So, uh, yeah. Um, anything else? No, not really. It's just 27 minutes of stock footage, all on YouTube, because, you know, all the other stuff you have to pay for, and uh, it's not practical, in my opinion, at that moment in time. Um, plus, as well, I had to source it all out. I had to look for every single bit, just like I have with some of the other videos as well. Um, but what I will say is, um, when I did the one... The longer one, the much longer one, like one hour long or just under one hour long with um, Frank's Abandoned Minds and Unusual Places when he found the M-Cave. Yes, that was a very long video, but it was 
much easier. I didn't have to use stock footage, so that was a big plus. And most all the material was from his footage, broken down respectively, not too much footage used, just small portions. And it was, I could break it down bit by bit because it was all in one place. You, you could uh, map it out because he did point out things like the rock there, the sealant down there, the scratches on the side, followed by the planks of wood on the ground and then the Area 51 sign, and then coming back out, finding the nail lodged into the rock. It was structured to begin with. So it made the job much more easier, especially when analyzing it, because you could do it bit by bit like a checkpoint system, because it was already kind of like that in place. Whereas in contrast to the Mosaic Michelle one, I was left to my own devices, literally starting absolutely from scratch without any material whatsoever. I don't know how I managed to do it, to be honest. I mean, you know, you've seen other big YouTubers do their little disappearance cases, regurgitate the story, what happens, start to finish, but, you know, they've got endless supplies of photos and access to CCTV and other bits of material, whereas the Mosaic Michelle one, there was literally nothing you could work from. So yeah. And the other difficulty to why it was much more difficult, it was the first time I actually covered another missing person who is tied to the MK of Kenny Beach mystery but at the same time, telling the story from start to finish. First time I did that, because as you know, with the Kenny Veach mystery, you know, whilst all the other YouTubers might tell the story, you know, the big YouTubers, regurgitate it, the very first video I did and onwards, I didn't do that. I actually started from where the mystery left off, where he disappeared, and then I started looking into all the possible ideas and reasons and stuff and then over time slowly i started working my way back to the beginning of how things played out so i did it the reverse way in a way whereas the mosaic michelle one i literally had to tell the story for the first time ever and i had to use my memory as well everything i knew everything i was told so yeah plus as well you think about it the length of that video the detail mentioned and I only, I only knew her for about two weeks or so. So, yeah. A lot to take in mind. Um, and as well, let's say certain websites, um, Facebook and somewhere else. I don't have access to those because I don't have an account with those. I mean, as I said before, I've explained it in the past. So, okay. So, that's another reason to why I couldn't find certain stuff. But to be honest, their profile seemed pretty dead anyway. No pun intended. A bit awkward that but the profile is pretty empty from what atari said in her recent video so yeah i think i've mentioned everything there the only other video that was pretty difficult more aggravating actually just before i get into that i just want to say the mosaic michelle one took about 30 to 40 hours or so to make i think it was about 30 hours and then another one i made after that was about 40 hours if you remember I can't remember which one that was. Was it to do with um, looking past Las Vegas into the desert? Mm. No, I think that might have been 27 minutes, 28 minutes. Well, you, you'll find it yourself because if you check the playlist above, the link, that's where all the cinematic videos are at. So make sure to check that out. I'll leave it in the comment section as well. I leave the best videos, the, the more, you know, edited ones and the more effort put in into that those special playlists because it's also a case file one as well okay now anyway second hardest video i've had to make more in terms of uh, one's own um what you call it tolerance level it was when i was using my older device in the past so i have kind of like moved up since so in the past quite a few months ago might have been a year ago and I was, uh, what was it in on? Yes, make sure to check the link out above right now if you haven't. It was the comparison and analysis and contrast between the covered cave which Sean found and comparing it visually, um, how it looks, the structuring of it, and comparing that to all the caves Scott Natal found in his multiple hike videos. I did a split down the middle, compared features, characteristics, you know, side by side, full on. 
um, wasn't too difficult because I didn't have to do audio recordings. I screen recorded images or the odd bit of footage and then spoke over it at the same time. So it was all in one, much easier. And then you put on the timeline, that video followed by that video, followed by that video, and then that, and then save. That's what I did. But it was still difficult because I still had to piece it together, uh, cut it down, crop it down, add the odd bit of text in and stuff. Got a bit fiddly, ordering it correctly. And I was doing it as I went along whilst I was recording. So yeah. And this is where it got, this is where it got very uh, testing. So um, first time round, I was piecing it together, editing. It took me nearly two hours and then my phone died. And because of the software and the phone I had at the time, there was a save button, but that was to export the video. You have to, if you're editing on that device in that software, which is Samsung Video Editor, you have to do it in one take. No negotiation. You turn your phone off, you've lost your project. If your phone dies, you've lost your project. If you just back out of the app and close it down, you've lost everything. Very harsh. And that's what happened. Two hours worth, wasted. Everything lost. Saved the video. Didn't have enough time because the battery died. So afterwards, I went back to it. It took three more hours to regroup everything, edit everything. Three hours on, I lost everything again because this time the app decided to crash. And because it crashed and it wasn't saved, exported, I lost everything. And then I had to spend another two, three hours putting it all back together again and then exporting it. That tested one's patience to the max. But then again, like I said, back in, um, just after high school, back in college, not university, but before that, back in college, 55 pieces of work to do over the Christmas break for six days straight, six hours nonstop per day, hardly any food, hardly any water. And even when I came back from uh, the final day of college at that time, before the break, I was pissed off, I was sick, I was tired, had enough, it was raining, I was soaking wet, I didn't even change clothes. I went into the house dripping, absolutely soaked, I sat down and started doing it for six hours straight whilst completely wet and repeated that the next day and the next day. Not wet, dry then, but you know what I'm saying. It took people two to three weeks, up to a month to get it done. Up to a, a month and for some two months. So roughly about one month it took people to get that work done it took me six days to get it done sometimes i can go to that extreme i'm gonna fucking go all in you know what i'm saying not often but it can happen and like that might be why i was able to make the mystery video i did and even though with all the the setbacks and that i was stupid enough i was crazy enough to keep trying and then I saved the video and then uploaded it and it was good it's worthwhile make sure to check it out as I said might as well so with all that in mind if we just link back to Mosaic Michelle so yes Atari has covered you know her in her own videos and stuff I had a you know brief look or so um, I need to have a proper look at the videos I keep forgetting to but I think they're interesting, seeing the odd few comments, people also getting involved and giving their points of view. Um, you know, briefly touched upon both Artari and Nina. Both of them believe or have the idea that Mosaic Michelle might not be who they really are, whether it be catfishing or that dis I can't say it, dis dis dissociative disorder. Um, I've said that incorrectly. And it's where you are one thing and then the other or something, or you, you switch and change out of nowhere. You know, one minute you think you know them and then the next they're completely different or they just completely disappear or completely change. That's roughly explaining that disassociative disorder or something. Um, is that true? Well, they're just briefly touching upon it. Nina mentioned about the disassociative 
disorder. Um, from my opinion, from like how I knew Michelle, uh, they never showed any negativity towards me, never said anything bad. All they were was very supportive of the channel and very interested in the mystery, and that was it. And even just before they disappeared completely, nothing bad to say, nothing at all. There was nothing at all to suggest that there was something wrong with them at that moment in time. Yes, bad things happened to her in the past, bad encounters with people, but it didn't seem to affect her at the time of when I was communicating with her. But, you know, maybe um, deep down there might be something going on, you know. Past experience can scar individuals in certain ways. It can leave people very vulnerable. It could leave people very cautious. It could leave people... Uh, very, uh, what do you call it, paranoid, maybe, and whatnot. Especially if people are, if, if like, the odd person is naive, it can have a great impact on them. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, aside from all that, um, there are only, like, possibilities. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, uh, Tari and uh, Nina weren't saying that's exactly what is the case. They were just suggesting, which is a fair point to make note of. Um from my point of view, I thought they were normal. They didn't act up, so I can't really agree. Uh, what about the catfish part aspect? Aside from obvious examples like on Xbox where you've got these teenagers and so using profile pictures of females um, and whatnot, suggestive ones and whatever, prov provocative ones, etc, etc, you know, it's obvious and the way they leave messages. Hey, check my channel out. Hey, leave a like. Hey, follow me on Xbox. And I'm thinking, get lost. You're just doing it because you're desperate, because you want followers. So you'll use a female profile picture and that will uh, bring in all the people who will fall for it and whatever. Use your heart emoji, kiss emoji, and whoa, look at this. You've got a massive following all of a sudden. So it's very obvious then. Uh, aside from that, no, I've never come across um, you know, really a catfish situation. Um, I can't really remember the, the definition of catfish. Is it where you appear as someone and turn out to be someone completely different, faking the identity visually? Or could it be to do with um, age as well? If it applies to age, yeah, I got screwed over once and it was uh, very weird. Um, don't need to go into too much detail, but um, friends with someone they appeared to be um, something and then turn out they weren't. They were the correct gender. Um, don't know how they looked visually because I never saw them, so there was no issue or loss there. But in terms of another factor, um, thought it was one thing, turned out to be another. So uh, in terms of the gender aspect, that wasn't problematic. It was just another factor. Um, but then again, based off timing, situation, they're probably just degenerative anyway. So, not much problem there, but, you know, take it hits you back, knocks you back, you make fuck me. That's not good. That's not great. And then you, so then you get, like, a sick feeling inside. You think, shit, you know, what could happen next or what will happen next? So that's where it leads on to the next point. You know, if I was to believe or it turned out that Mosaic was doing it in a manipulative way or... Um, catfishing even though it didn't seem very likely you know if I start believing in all those ideas which are valid ones to be honest um all it does and even though you know you're supposed to listen to positive advice and whatever I end up going to the other extreme I will become very cautious my um what do you call it my instinct level will go you know 100 percent maximum alert status um and i'll just give you a brief little insight to that so if you don't know already i was friends with someone in the past online who was you know living nearby to me well in the end there were and basically i didn't quite you know i felt something was off about them 
There was no links to suggest it. There was no evidence to prove it. There was nothing at all, but I used my ultra instinct, no pun intended there. You know, do you know what I did? I just said to him, you know what? In five years time, you're going to go off and do that, study, do what you need to do. It's all about me, me, me. You do what you do. And in that process, you go quiet. And after that, you've completely gone. No messages, no contact, no interaction whatsoever. And that's how you'll screw me over and more. And the first words that came out of their mouth, Andrew, you are absolutely correct. I've been such a bitch. That's what they said. <laughs> Upon hearing it, was it a victory? Absolutely not. And that is the key thing that always circles back. At times, I am very good at predicting negative stuff on me. My encounters, my experiences. Like I did then, that five, year, five years ahead, that's what they're going to do. And I predicted it. Is it like some kind of victory where I'm thinking, yes, I proved you wrong and I proved you wrong. And would it be like that in like a conspiracy, a big disaster? And I said, yes, I got it right. You all should have listened to me if it happened. No, because the one thing you don't want to happen is to be right when it comes to predicting negative stuff. Simple as. Because all it does, it's like, oh, I was right. And then it reinforces and then it leads to other thoughts of, okay then, I've got that right. With such levels of um, uncertainty by other people and such levels of low evidence around, nothing to suggest it, and yet I still managed to see through and saw it completely, expose them. What am I capable of? What else do I know? What else can I see within people? Can I see into their mind? Do I know what they're like? What they're going to do to me? What they're going to do next? Do I know their next move and their next move within a five month period to a five years? Who next? What else? Where? When? How? And all that. And then you start thinking, damn, if, um, if your reflexes and your alert level and instincts are so sensitive that you can pick up on the smallest of signs the one word, they say the wrong word on the wrong day and that instantly triggers the ignition of what could happen in five years time. It could get to such extremes where it's like that and you think, God, can't trust anyone, can't look at anyone, can't speak to anyone because it will just go completely wrong. Something bad will happen. So uh, yeah, that is what I mean. When you start listening to certain positive advice and other certain bits and bobs, not all the time, but sometimes you can actually be end up worse off than what you currently were. You know, uh, just a very good positive contradiction by people is some positive people will say, screw everybody else, don't listen to them, don't care about what they have to say. If they're all negative, well, screw them. Be yourself, do whatever. Screw everyone. Well. Technically, if you listen to that advice and you literally took it word for word, then you don't talk to anyone ever again. Screw everyone. Don't talk to anyone. Don't listen to anyone. Don't be around anyone. And then either the same positive people or another group of positive people that would say the same line would then criticise you and say, oh, why are you isolating yourself? Why are you away from everyone? And then you get criticised. You see how I mean? So you, you listen to certain advice from positive people, you take action. Now you're in a worse off situation and talk about getting kicked down when you're already down, those same people that put you into that position are now having a go at you and telling you, why have you done that? Well, you told me to, you advised me to. That's an extreme case scenario in a sense, but that's what I mean, all these contradictions. So if we link it back to Mosaic Michelle, Yes, there are a few um, theories and ideas valid. There's not too much evidence to suggest that that's exactly what they were up to or what they were doing. But just like with the Kenny Beach mystery, due to the simple fact and nature, it's so mysterious and, you know, at some point in time, unexplainable and such limited resources. Any theory, any suggestion is open. 
the simple facts of those factors. And like with Mosaic Michelle, limited material, very mysterious, quite unexplainable, abrupt, all of a sudden, not what they are usually like compared to how they've appeared themselves. And like Kenny, how Kenny appeared in his videos, he doesn't seem like the sort to do this or to do that. What he may have done, Mosaic Michelle, from what I knew and heard from her, she didn't seem like the sort of person to be a certain way or have issues. But maybe Nina and Atari know something I don't or have um, a certain point of view which um, they can see which I can't, which is still valid. So this is what I mean. Once again, many, many, many crossovers which tie in with one another and can link. Is there anything else? No, I think that's it. I'll briefly touch upon another thing in the next video, just a short one. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.